Okay, you grew up uh, in a family that was heavily immersed in football. What was that like for you? What kind of memories do you have of that? Um, it's actually, it's all I've ever known. My dad was a coach since I was born, so my whole life, so I haven't known anything different. But um, there's a lot of football talk at the dinner table and on car rides. And then once my brother started playing football in junior high and high school, uh, they would talk strategy and schemes and I kind of paid attention and <laughs> took a liking to it. And then um, my dad and I would watch some games together and he'd quiz me as we went along like, okay, you're the head coach. What are you doing in this situation? And I'd have to <laughs> answer. Right. So he made it fun and I just really liked it. Was that kind of what you enjoyed the most, I guess, the way it brought your family together, or, or what did you like about it? Yeah, I think so. And my mom was real involved in it too, and really likes football, and to this day they still watch my games and Rick's games and are really into it, so I think that's probably what I enjoyed the most. Right. So when did you decide that you wanted to work in football? Um, I grew up working around the Eskimos, just doing odd jobs for free <laughs> and getting my feet wet and it was more just something to do as opposed to wanting to work in football and then I went to school and I graduated in communications and broadcast production from Washington State so I actually worked at a video production company in Edmonton for a while and after college and we moved back to the states and did some other stuff so it wasn't until like five or six years after college that I realized some of the best, fun, most fun times of my life was when I was working in football, so right. I thought, well, maybe I should try getting back into that. Now, obviously, it's a male-dominated industry, football sports. Did you have any hesitation because of that, being a woman? Not really. I think because I, growing up around it, I didn't feel out of place, really. And at the time, there were a lot of women actually working on the business side of the Eskimo, so I never really felt all that out of place. Right. It wasn't until, uh, I think it was in the uh, 99 season, Don Matthews was the head coach and asked if I would chart for the for training camp and games. So I was actually like on the football field and on the sidelines. It all seemed to go well and I think having guys like Don Matthews give me those opportunities when girls weren't really doing that at the time was gave me a lot of confidence too. You are currently the director of football operations for the Stamps. So what was your your kind of your first job with the team and how did how did it did it evolve into where you are now? Because um, so you've had a lot of different roles along the way, right? Yeah. I mean growing up like I mentioned I did I helped with reception. I was the mascot at the mall. I cooked hot dogs on fan day. I passed out streamers for touchdowns. I yeah. like I did everything and then I helped out with media relations and marketing and game day, but like I said before, I didn't get paid to do any of that. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> so it was more just for the experience of it. So my actual first real paying full-time job was in 2006, and I was hired as a media relations assistant for the Eskimos. For, and actually, I was living in San Diego at the time, and I heard that that job had opened up. And my, I knew my dad had one more year until he was going to retire, so I actually didn't tell him I was applying, and I applied with Rick Lawlisher and Dave Jamison, who was the head PR guy at the time. I just knew my dad, he as supportive as he is of me, he doesn't want people to think he's hiring his kids and sure. doing all that, so he would be kind of nervous about it. So they hired me, and so that was my first job, and I learned so much from Dave Jamison. I think I was in Edmonton for a total of seven seasons. And then I came to Calgary in that same role. I think I was here five years and then the, my current job opened up and the assistant GM, Mike Petrie, at the time asked if I'd be interested. And it, the guy had left in September or October. So he's like, would you mind at least just helping us get through the end of the year and you can try the job out, see if you like it. It would help us out. And then at the end of the year, you can see if you like it or not. And I'm still here. Here you are. <laughs> You're obviously very accomplished. A last question for you, for women who are thinking of um, getting into this industry, into football, what kind of advice would you give to them? Um, I think the doors open wider now than it ever has been for women to get into sports. So I think if it's something you're interested in, you should go for it. I think as long as you prove you know what you're doing and you're good at your job and you belong, that 
I've found guys don't care at all whether you're male or female. They just mm -hmm. like people who can help them win or help them achieve their goals. The only other advice is be willing to start at the bottom and work your way up. Like, and then the more you know and the more you're willing to do, the more valuable you become. Yeah, absolutely. Last one for you, actually. What do you love most about your job right now? Um, I think just being around the coaches and there's a really good group of guys here right now and they, I just seem to fit in with them fine. They don't treat me any differently and I just really like coming to work every day and being around everyone. There's obviously certain frustrations like with any job, things I'd rather not have to do, but overall I just really enjoy it.